Hello everybody. Welcome back to Southern Crocker Simply Southern. Um, George is with his mom and I thought I would just take a few minutes to talk about some comments and it's all good. Um, we always ask people when they watch video if they haven't subscribed please do that and um, if you like the video give it a thumbs up even if you must give it a thumbs down and uh, comment below and we always read your comments and uh, George and I both read the comments and somebody wrote the other day that um, they were just curious about me when I moved from southern Alabama to south Texas how did I adjust to the dual culture and the Spanglish that was the way they uh, phrased that and so I thought I would uh, talk a little bit about my hometown and moving over here to South Texas. Um, I was born and raised in my hometown and I lived there until I was um, 19 years old and then I had married George and we moved to South Texas. And uh, when I looked at the population of the town, I, my guess, my best guesstimate from when I lived there growing up was about 10,000 people. When I Googled it today, it said it was close to 10,000, not quite 10,000. That kind of su um, surprised me a little bit. But um, it was a small town, but it had plenty of stores. It had the movies. It had restaurants. Go to downtown area. It had a, a public swimming pool. Um couple of public swimming pools, um, you know, baseball parks and the such. It was, uh, to me, to me it was a small town compared to other places like Mobile, Alabama, or Pensacola, Florida. Much smaller than that. But um, they had uh, lots of schools. I don't even think kindergarten... Well, I know kindergarten was not required when I was a little girl, but I think they did kindergartens maybe out of the churches. And uh, we had two elementary schools, which were first grade through sixth grade. We had a um, middle school for seventh and eighth graders. We had a junior high school for seventh, I mean, seventh, eighth, ninth and tenth graders. And then we had a senior high school for juniors and seniors. There was also another school, which was, uh, that was my bracelet fell off, y'all. <laughs> that loud crash. <laughs> we did have another school, but it was not in Atmore. So in that Atmore area, those were the schools. And um, I do have my notes, people, because that's the teacher and me, and I have my magnifying glass because I'm blind. And... Uh, the people there were blacks, whites, and Native American Indians. There were, those were the three races that were there, colors, whatever you want to call them. Blacks, whites, and Native Americans. And um, I grew up around all of them, maybe not all, all of them all through my whole time of growing up there, but at some Point, I came in contact with everybody and um, I saw all kind of skin tones and uh, as a matter of fact with this bronze tan you might think I might be Native American Shh, don't tell that person that claims to be Melody my twin sister she might get wind of that and might tr try to take that somewhere <laughs> but um, the only Hispanic family I did not even know them, and it was just right before, I would say right before I moved away, and uh, I had just heard that their name was Jimenez. So I don't know if that was really their name, or um, when you're in southern Alabama, you might as well say Jimenez, because if it's Jimenez, people are going to pronounce it Jimenez anyway. Remember, this was back in 1978, so that was a long time ago. Times had changed a lot everywhere. And um, I had never eaten Mexican food before. Um, growing up, my mama cooked collard greens, butter beans, fried corn, cornbread, you know, that kind of stuff. And um, 
she just had never had Mexican food herself. She certainly didn't know how to cook it. We didn't have a Mexican restaurant in town, and I just never had that option. And uh, so when I moved to South Texas, it was, you know, an eye-opener, and that, the eating aspect of it also. And um, also, I had never hunted or eaten game either. Uh, my dad was not a hunter. My mom was not a hunter. Uh, my mom liked fish. Uh, the closest I ever came to hunting was probably uh, when we were seniors and uh, Dale Matthews hooked us the whole senior class up with a deer hunt and uh, I didn't shoot anything. I think maybe some people did, but hey, we were having a senior trip, if you know what I mean, so we all had a good time. But that was about as close as I'd ever come to hunting. And so then when I did pack up, moved to Beverly, or Riviera, if you know what I mean. Um, it was a very small place. It still is. I looked, I googled it too. It said the population was just under 700 people. That is probably accurate if you use our actual, where you live, the limits of that, but we are attached to uh, outgoing areas and I'm sure we consider the population more than that but it's a very uh, small place and uh, we don't have any um, did not for years and years and years did not have any stores um, none like you would expect anyway um, when I first moved here there was a family owned I guess grocery store and, uh, you know, they had fresh fruit and vegetables and meats, and, um, and that was very nice to have. And there was an, another establishment. I don't remember if they were both open at the same time. I truly don't remember. But um, they had, you know, a few housewares and things like that. It certainly wasn't huge, but um, coming over here as a 19-year-old, anywhere to browse and look around was great. We did have a local hardware store um, here when I first moved here, and uh, you know they sold lumber and hardware and all that. And they they had a section for for the women, you know, with cute gifts and stuff like that. And I would just go in there and stand forever because um, I was so lonely. I didn't know anybody, and it was just something to look at. But uh, the only place we have to shop for anything. Uh, is Dollar General now, and y'all heard me talk about it. You've probably seen it in our videos. I am so appreciative of our Dollar General, and uh, it's nice to be able to have something without having to drive, you know, 30 minutes somewhere to, to go to another store. And uh, we have lots of churches here for the population to be so small. I think I counted about eight. Um, a Methodist, a couple of Baptists, a couple of Catholics, a Spanish-speaking church, and a couple of non-denominational churches. So, I mean, we're well covered down here. You know, the Deep South, Alabama's the Bible Belt and all that, but uh, Deep South Texas has got it covered too. And uh, so, if I just had a video the other day about teaching in the public school system. We have one school here. It's from pre-K up to seniors, and that's it. So uh, that was a big difference for me, you know, coming in and adjusting to living in a very small place. And uh, the kind of people that were here were white, black, and Hispanics. No Native American Indians that I'm aware of, except probably myself because of what Melody says. If y'all don't know who Melody is, go back and check her out. She hijacked my channel a couple of weeks ago. And uh, uh, the Hispanic people, it was no different to me than, than anybody else, except they spoke a language that I didn't understand. And uh, <laughs> when uh, I didn't take Spanish in school, the closest I came was um, when I was in fourth grade. Yes, I said fourth grade. We took French. So any of you people back there that ever went to school with me, if y'all ever, ever see this, comment below and tell me if y'all remember taking fr French in the fourth grade. Um, I can't remember the teacher's name either. I can see her face, but I can't remember her name. And uh, so I never really learned it. And 
And the question that brought me to doing this video was, how did I adjust to being in a dual culture and speaking Spanglish? I'm not sure what your definition of Spanglish is. Um, mine is speaking Spanish and English together. It's broken up. You speak a little Spanish, you speak a little English. And uh, I probably understand much more than I can speak. I think if I was uh, thrown into a situation where I was forced to be with a Spanish-speaking person, not forced, but you know, if we were confined, she spoke only, or he spoke only Spanish, I speak only English, I'm pretty sure I would get the drift of what they were talking about. I'm pretty sure I could figure it out. And, uh, and yes, I've lived here a very, very long time, very long time, and uh, uh, I should have probably learned I didn't, but when I subbed in the school, and those kids would say, Miss, do you know how to speak Spanish? I always said, yes, I do. <laughs> so, I don't know if I fooled any of them or not, but um, also, uh, this is interesting to me. Our neighbors next door have been our neighbors now. We've been in this house for 35 years. I was uh, six months pregnant with Jason and Jared when we moved in. And we had lived next door for two years, so 37 years we were neighbor with, with uh, them, neighbors with them. And uh, the, the mister of the house was in the Peace Corps, you know, back in the 70s. And um, he fell in love with a, a Kenyan woman and married her and brought her back. And she moved here probably a year or two before I did. And... Um, so I didn't. We didn't live here that whole time, but um, she had lived here about the same amount of time I am. So, if if I thought it was strange coming from Southern Alabama, I'm sure it was a culture shock to her from coming from Kenya. And uh, one very interesting thing I'll say, she told me that you know she was so interested to learn how to use a washing machine when she came because she had actually washed clothes on the rocks in the river. So. <clears throat> that might be just another story in itself sometime. I don't know if she would be interested in coming on, on YouTube and talking, but um, I know y'all would love to, to hear from her because, oh, the stories she can tell. And uh, let's see, what else was I going to talk about? Uh, oh, I had never eaten Mexican food before, and uh, pretty much right after I got here, I was introduced to Mexican food, and... So we moved here, I think, in September, something like that, October. And, uh, you know, Christmas was coming up, and they had tamales, they being George's mom. And um, so she fixes my plate and puts the tamales on my plate. And honestly, I did not pick it up and bite it. I didn't. But I did not know what in the world it was. I did not know you were supposed to unwrap it to eat it. I just waited for somebody else to eat it, and then I did. But I love tamales. They're very, um, usually a treat, and like a, the tradition around here is at Christmas time, you uh, definitely want to know and love someone who cooks tamales because that's a traditional gift, and I absolutely love tamales. And uh, I love all Mexican food. I love uh, chalupas and tacos and enchiladas. And there was a wonderful restaurant here when we first moved. They're no longer in business, but they ruined me with their enchiladas. I absolutely adored them, and I have never, ever been able to find a place that cooks like them, and uh, I certainly can't make them, so I do miss their enchiladas. And uh, let's see here. About the hunting, I have had an opportunity to hunt. My, As you know, we have the Crocker Ranch, where the Crockers went out and did a 100-day challenge. Um, I posted a picture on our uh, YouTube channel under the community tab. If you haven't looked, go look. We have a, a lot of pictures under there of the kids when they were little and stuff. But it was a picture of me killing my first deer. And it was my only deer. Uh, that is by choice. I probably did want the excitement of hunting. But uh, in, in reality, it really wasn't for me. Um, I enjoyed watching the boys hunt. I liked riding with them, being there with them and all that, but I never wanted to kill anything else. But I certainly have eaten a lot of game in the almost 42 years I've lived here. We've eaten, you know, 
deer and ho- wild hogs and pigs and turkey and, and um, I don't know what else, but especially now guy, uh, N-I-L-G-A-I. It's the nail guy. We say nail guy. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> it's a delicious, it tastes like beef, very lean. And uh, I have been very fortunate to have tasted these things and not only taste them, but actually enjoy them. And uh, let's see. Is that about it? The teacher has finished with her notes. <laughs> I think that about covered it. But um, yes, it was a big shock moving. I think it would have been a big shock if I had moved from southern Alabama to New York City or southern Alabama to even Kentucky or Mississippi even. I was young. Anything would have been a culture shock for me. Um, it's a small place and uh, I'm so glad my children were raised here and uh, I think they, you know, they flew the coop as soon as they were old enough to get away from here, but uh, I think they realize it's a good place and I guarantee you this, it is a good place for George and I to be retired and, uh, you know, with different illnesses and problems that we have. Uh, you know, if I guarantee if we needed a helping hand, there'd be somebody down the street or around the corner that would help, that's for sure. So, um, again, y'all comment below and tell me, have you ever made a big move? If you moved, how old were you when you moved? Um, I'm interested about that because uh, as a family, we've traveled quite a bit, uh, George and the boys and myself, uh, over the United States. And uh, Jason went on to see way more states than we did. All the boys probably did more traveling after that. But um, let me know if you've ever had to make that big move because uh, it's a, a whole lot of different experiences. Like I said, I, I had some things that, you know, I was very young. I had no family here. I had George's family, so it's not like I didn't know anyone. I really didn't get to know really people until I'd had Matt, and Matt started school, so that was quite a while. And uh, But I adjusted well. I'm still here. Uh, nobody's kicked me out of this town yet, so I guess I wasn't too bad coming in, and they all still make fun of my southern accent. I don't guess that'll ever go away, but I still don't have a draw quite like Melody, if you know what I mean. So uh, I guess that's it today, folks, and uh, y'all have a good day, and Keep your chin up. See ya.